Greetings and hello. I'm Josiah George with the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. Thank you for tuning in to our series, History at Home. Although the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum is closed right now, like much of the other sites here in Boston due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we continue to share with you the stories of this iconic moment in American history, which you can enjoy from the comfort and safety of your home. We look forward to the day when we can open up our doors and you too can visit us right here in Boston. So while we wait for that day, we thought we'd like to take you on a little journey and delve into some of the history surrounding the vessels of the Boston Tea Party. The Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Brig Beaver, three vessels whose fate would be forever tied together and sealed in American history. One of the biggest myths surrounding the Boston Tea Party is the misconception that the Sons of Liberty threw the cargoes of tea from the decks of British ships. Although the American colonists were all British at this time, and these were in fact British colonies, these vessels were built right here in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The Dartmouth. It was built in 1767 in Bedford Village, which is now New Bedford, Massachusetts. It was built as a cargo carrying workhorse for the whale industry. Dartmouth was actually the first vessel built in that community. And that construction set off a long tradition of building ships there. Full rigged vessels such as the Dartmouth did not typically engage in the pursuit of the whale. Instead, they served as cargo support vessels, such was the Dartmouth at the time of the Boston Tea Party. The maiden voyage of Dartmouth took her from Nantucket to London, England to deliver a shipment of whale oil. Some years later, both the Dartmouth and the Beaver were docked in London to deliver their shipments of whale oil when they took on the cargo of the faded tea. The Dartmouth was the first vessel to arrive in Boston Harbor with the tea on November 28, 1773, with 114 crates of that tea on board. Her arrival set off a 20-day clock that would culminate in the destruction of the tea. The Navigation Acts at the time stated that a vessel entering a harbor had 20 days to unload that cargo. And so Dartmouth's arrival set off that 20 days and her timeline would be the morning of December 17th, 1773. Not too far from our location here is the famous Rose Wharf of Boston, named after 18th century local merchant, John Rowe, who was partial owner of the second vessel to arrive with the tea, the ship Eleanor. Built here in Boston, in one of the many shipyards that lined Boston's harbor, this three-masted, 250-ton merchant vessel was referred to as a constant trader. These vessels are considered the 18-wheelers of the 18th century. Their very purpose is to transport goods from one port to the other, unload them as quickly as possible, take on the next cargo, and transport it to the next port. Even in the 18th century, time is money and no one knew that better than the other partial owners of the Eleanor, the London banking firm, Lane, Son & Fraser, who in the summer of 1773, wrote a letter and addressed it to the honorable sirs of the East India Company saying, we have a ship which we intend for Boston and should be much obliged for the freight of the teas you intend exporting to that place. And with that, the third partial owner, ship's captain, James Bruce, chartered the Eleanor to Boston. She arrived on December 2nd with 114 chests of tea. For this next bit of history, we're gonna take a little road trip. Follow me. We're now here in Pembroke, Massachusetts on the shore of the North River. It was all up and down these shores in the 18th and early 19th century. Dozens of shipyards would set up shop. And we are on the very site of the Brick Kiln shipyard set up in 1730. And this is the very site where the Brig Beaver was constructed in 1772. Mm -hmm. 
built by Ichabod Thomas. She measured 85 feet bow to stern. A 24-foot beam crossed her from port to starboard, and her draft, which is the measurement of the water line to the bottom of the keel, was only nine feet. This was to accommodate the sandbar in Nantucket's harbor. The beaver's story takes us out here to Hull, Massachusetts. I'm standing on Pemberton Point, a little rocky shore, and I'm practicing my social distancing. Uh, but this spot is very significant to the Boston Tea Party story. It's also very significant to current events. This is the closest land accessible location to Rainsford Island. You can see it there over my shoulder there, uh, Boston in the background. Uh, this island was also known as Hospital Island or Quarantine Island. The Beaver was captained by Hezekiah Coffin, a Quaker mariner, and with her cargo of 112 chests of the company's tea on board, she arrived in Boston's harbor on December 7th with a potential case of smallpox on board. And as a result, she was quarantined at Rainsford Island for eight days. Now, during this time, the town board of selectmen instructed Samuel Hartley, keeper of the hospital at Rainsford Island, to remove all of the cargo from the hold and to undergo a cleansing process, whereby the Brig Beaver was smoked and cleaned with sulfur. The Beaver was finally cleared and allowed to come up to town on December 15th, less than 24 hours before three cargoes of tea were destroyed off of three ships at Griffin's Wharf. Did you know that there was a fourth ship involved in the Tea Party history? The vessel William was bound for Boston carrying 58 chests of tea. Six days before the tea was destroyed, the William was caught between two storms as she rounded Cape Ann on Boston's North Shore. She couldn't manage to break free of the winds and enter into the shelter of Boston's inner harbor. The William was blown south toward Cape Cod. And when her captain, Joseph Loring, could no longer compete with the inclement weather, he used the storm surge to beach the vessel onto Race Point, which is about two miles east of Provincetown. So what happened to the tea on board the William, you might ask? We know that most of the tea was reloaded onto a smaller vessel and taken to the safety of the British military Fort William on Castle Island in Boston's Harbor. From there, the tea is lost to history. I want to thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed hearing about the ships involved in the Boston Tea Party and that you'll come and visit us here and board one of these vessels and experience what it's like for yourself to throw the tea into Boston Harbor. Huzzah!